Hare Krishna, everyone. Welcome back to our Shravan Utsav. We have been going through uh, Krishna group and uh, we have had wonderful senior devotees. And today, again, we are very fortunate to have uh, His Grace Vrajavi Hari Prabhuji. So, Vrajavi Hari Prabhuji joining our Shravan Utsav for the first time. In the previous Shravan Utsav, I tried to uh, get Prabhuji online with us to hear from him. But unfortunately, our timing couldn't match. And uh, so this time when I requested, Prabhuji immediately agreed. And uh, that, is, that is how Prabhuji is here today. So a brief introduction of Prabhuji. <clears throat> Prabhuji is a full-time mom, Brahmachari. He's an author. He's a spiritual teacher at Sri Sri Radha Gopinath Mandir. It's, it's on Chaupati for the last two decades, or actually more than two decades. Uh, he has a major degree in economics and a master's degree in monetary policy and international finance. He shares his daily reflections, meditations, and discourses on his website called yogaformodernage.com. There are over thousands, thousands of articles on his, artic on his website and hundreds of web talks on his YouTube channel. He joined the Times Group after completing his MBA in finance, and he has experience with multinational companies such as KPMG, uh, Pete Marvick, and ICICI Bank. Prabhuji is a member of the Education and Training Body for Congregation Development at Iskand Chaupati. He counsels young men in the monastery and trains a satellite community of 100 plus families at Borivli uh, in northern Mumbai. He is well known for his deep study of Vedic contemporary history and presenting it in a very relevant way in the form of life enhancing seminars for the corporates and students, physically and online. Prabhuji is a seasoned international speaker. He has uh, traveled and spoken in various different countries like USA, Australia, UK, Germany, Russia, and other parts of Europe uh, and the Middle East as well. Prabhuji's talks are very lucid and very cheerful, and he's able to harmonize the wisdom from the Vedic era to enhance our modern lives. And uh, those who have heard from Rajvi Hari Prabhuji, uh, you all know that uh, it is uh, very riveting. It is very attractive, magnetic uh, talk that Prabhuji gives. So we are very fortunate today that Prabhuji has found some time for all of us, and he's going to talk on Krishna book. So let us welcome Prabhuji. Uh, and uh, show our gratitude by uh, chanting loudly the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare 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 in the temple area. All of you and to get an opportunity to serve all of you today. And um, I hope I can please you today with my uh, little bit of service. Hare Krishna. Om Jnana Timirandhasya Jnana Anjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Venama Mukam karoti vachalam pangum langayate girim et kripatamaham vande shri guru di natarinam paramananda madhavam shri chaitanyam ishwaram namaom vishnu padaya krishna preshtaya bhutale shri mate bhakti vedanta swaminiti namine namaste saraswate Reve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Parchata de Shatarine Vancha Kalpataru Pescha Kripa Sindhu Bevacha Patitanam Pavane Pio Vaishnave Pio Namunama Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Shiva Sadhvi Gaurabhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, 
हरे रामा हरे रामा राम रामा हरे हरे कथांचना स्मृते युस्क सुकरम भवे विस्मृते विपरीत सी चैतन्य नमा योता प्रवेश मम वाच मीमा प्रसुप्ता संजीवय तखिल शक्तिधरा स्वधा अन्यां श्रवणादी प्राण नमो भगवते पुषाय तोभ्यं हरे कृष्ण संबरीश महाराज प्रभु मी टू स्पीक ऑन दी फोर्टी एथ चैप्टर ऑफ कृष्णा बुक the prayers are accrued of course so i'll briefly share my thoughts and uh, from my notes which i make when during my study of propas books so this is a very special chapter because ambarish uh, our uh, parikshit sorry parikshit maharaj was being told uh, bhagavatam uh, by shukdev goswami and uh, parikshit maharaj is said to be the emblem or the highest personification for shravanam and shukdev goswami is the best example for kirtan so like that there are nine limbs of bhakti hmm? for smaranam it is prahlad maharaj for pada sevanam lakshmi ji for archanam it is uh, prithu maharaj for sakhyam it is arjuna for dasyam it is anuman ji for atmanivedanam it is bali maharaj and the example for all the nine is ambarish maharaj and one thing is left out of this nine that is vandanam for vandanam offering prayers the best example is akrura so and every devotee in his con uh, he prays to krishna <laughs> because our main usp is krishna only so so this chapter assumes significance because uh, it is about uh, the best prayers i mean take, all prayers are great but akrura's prayers as you more significance for sadakas because it is prayers by the person who is said to be the best in vandanam so the, with this background if we enter the prayer we will be more excited to hear and read this chapter so akrura <clears throat> is uh, now offering prayers to krishna and this is the context is you know he is on the on the from yamuna he had seen krishna and balram in yamuna and uh, akrura was very surprised because he thought krishna and balram were in the chariot so he comes back to the chariot and he sees krishna and balram are in the chariot also then he again goes back to the yamuna and he sees krishna and balram are there also so he, then he <laughs> offers beautiful prayer he understands the mystical this is the four hundred form of krishna vishnu form basically he understands krishna's he gets this vision of krishna's uh, divinity and then he offers beautiful prayers and later when he comes to the chariot krishna says very mischievously so akrura uncle did you see something spectacular in yamuna so akrura says my dear krishna when somebody has seen you what else is there all wonderful all auspicious things are there like that he glorifies krishna more so these prayers are very special because in these prayers i personally learned a few things which i will share first is you know he offers a prayer the the the, the standard prayers you know in every prayer you will see in, uh, in bhagavatam there are some elements you will always find one is you will always find praise praising the lord uh, like generally when we come in front of the lord many times we don't praise the lord we just ask from the lord my dear lord i am having this problem please but if you want to if you want to impress someone if a boy wants to woo a girl or vice versa and if you want to win the love of a person in this world then one of the first things you do is you praise the person you offer a flower you offer a gift and you say many sweet things many pray many praiseworthy things when we were young there was a very famous song bollywood song where the hero is singing to the heroine he sings her praises and then he says how much i can praise you tareef karu kya uski jisne tumhe banaya he says he says i want to praise you i want to praise you because that is very pleasing to the heart when we hear our praise that is why in many times in bhagavatam classes we fall asleep because it is not about me but if it is my birthday and people are appreciating me i will not fall asleep even if i had very little sleep in the night 
So praise is one amazing uh, element of prayer, which which is what most devotees begin with. Kunti Maharani also begins with Prahlad Maharaj, all of them. So praise is there. So Akrura is offering beautiful prayers to the Lord. He is saying that, my dear Lord, you are the person from whose navel Brahmaji is appearing and all the elements, earth, water, fire, air, ether, all these elements are coming, are produced from your body. You are the super soul of everything and but no one knows your transcendental form and everyone in this material world is influenced by three modes but you are not influenced by three modes and great sages and mystics worship you and uh, but and then he gives examples of how different people worship you. He says how Brahmanas worship you by offering Vedic ritualistic ceremonies. There are others who worship you by performing different sacrifices. There are people who, uh, who study a lot of uh, scriptures. They worship you by through transcendental knowledge. And uh, like that, so he is, he is, he is glorifying those who are doing Jnana Yagya. And then he says there are devotees who are Bhagavatas who simply worship you. They decorate their body with tilak and they are devotees. So like that, he uh, and then he also says there are Shaivites who who follow different uh, acharyas, but they worship you only in the form of Lord Shiva. Of course, Prabhupada writes in the purport there that uh, worship of devtas is also indirect worship, and uh, but it is not the orthodox proper worship of Krishna because uh, the devtas um, are coming from Krishna. And the worship of Devtas is not on the same level as worship of Krishna. Hmm? So like that, he offers beautiful prayers. And all these prayers are examples of praise. And generally, when we read these prayers, I've seen many times when we are studying Bhagavatam, we rush through the prayer section. We go to the pastime. We think pastime, there is a lot of nectar. But actual nectar is in the prayers because the prayers teach us how to pray. Hmm? It, uh, and this chapter is especially significant because this chapter is teaching us how to live in the Krishna space. We generally, we live in the I space. See, one of the most amazing secrets of happiness, which the world, um, unfortunately, nobody speaks about it. If you want to be happy, get out of your space. We generally live in I space. My problem, he told me like that, he did like that to me, my house, my issues, my family. So this is never ending. But when we come to Krishna space, oh, Krishna is beautiful. Krishna is a peacock feather. Krishna. Oh, then slowly we get out of our head. See, there are two extremes. I'm not talking about ignoring our problems. And the other extreme is obsession with our problems and our issues. Spending some quality time in a space beyond ourselves is a secret of happiness. And the best way we can be out of our space is by glorifying the Lord. And how to glorify the Lord? We can read prayers of great devotees. How they pray, the same things we can pray. But we can add our uh, emotions in those prayers and make those prayers personal. Otherwise, we will be hiding behind the prayers of the great souls and not offering our heart to Krishna. It is very much possible that I mechanically repeat the prayers, memorize all the verses and uh, my heart is not offered to Krishna. So like that, Akrura offers beautiful prayers and he says um, uh, that, uh, uh, of course, Prabhupada writes very nicely and uh, he paraphrases Akrura's prayers that those who worship the devtas, their prayers may go to Krishna or may not go to Krishna. Hmm? So like that. Mm, so we need to approach Krishna directly and this is one of the prayers and uh, then uh, he says that uh, Prabhupada writes there that we need to worship Krishna directly and not the devtas because when we worship the devtas just like the uh, river water sometimes may go to the ocean some water may not go to the ocean so we don't know but we should not hesitate to directly go to Krishna but we have seen in our lives, in, in our congregation, I've seen many devotees who are sincere uh, devotees of the devtas. They came to Krishna only. when they And that happened only when they prayed to the respective devta that please give me what is best for me. When we ask for material benedictions from the devtas, we may not come to Krishna. But if we tell the Lord, our respective devta, we are attached to that, please give me what is best for me, you will be amazed how the... Uh, respective devta will connect us to Krishna. 
we have one of our senior most counselors here he is 85 years old shabanu prabhu is one of the senior most counselors so he and his wife would go to mahalakshmi temple every friday for i think 25 years on the and uh, on the 25th wedding anniversary they pray to mahalakshmi ji that you know we have been coming to you every week and praying to you and you have protected us protected our family now please give us what you think is best for us and next day they were connected to our journey of self discovery course so many examples you know uh, our temple is next to the most famous one of the most famous temples of mumbai the babulnath lord shiva temple so many people were walking through the lane which goes to babulnath temple we have to go through our temple they have gone for years every monday and whenever they pray to babulnath ji that please give me what is best for me they ended up coming to radha gopinath temple is kunj of party temple this happened so many times but there are also people who have not come to krishna although they were very devoted demigod worshippers i remember one boy was coming from my class he was very attached to one particular baba and then he stopped coming and i pursued him and i was following up with him and i finally met him he said i will not come to the temple to meet you i'll come near bharati vidya bhavan which is close to our temple so when i met him there he said i have no problems with what you are teaching everything is great but i can't come to your temple and then he started crying he said because if i come to your temple more often i can see that i'm forgetting my baba the person i am worshipping so that emotional sentimental attachment he couldn't give up so i told him no that your particular baba your devta will be more happy if you come to krishna but krishna all attractive power we know but some when somebody is blindly attached then you can't do anything that's why akura is saying that not necessary that all the devta worshipers will come to krishna all worship will come to krishna so both aspects are there so like this akura is offering prayers and akura continues to offer prayers saying that uh, you know he gives a very amazing description because many times many people cannot accept krishna's transcendental form there are many people who worship the material energy material you know uh, for them the neophytes who cannot understand krishna's transcendental form uh, akura is Uh, explaining the universal form how to worship the lord in nature so that is also needed because many people cannot appreciate uh, krishna in his tribhanga transcendental form so this is interesting akrura is the best example for prayers and he is teaching us how to see krishna in nature sometimes you know we become so fanatic about krishna the personality the bhagwan realization that we just condemn the impersonal understanding or the paramatma realization but uh, all three are parts of krishna only like i personally get lot of strength when i go to parks when i sit in the gardens and uh, you know i am with nature and there is one purport in the first canto where propas says this is very spiritual sitting in the parks gardens <laughs> but we generally don't talk about it in an official forum because they are afraid devotees may think this is high impersonal understanding is higher than bhagwan realization impersonally sir incomplete in their search they have to come to bhagwan but those who are appreciating bhagwan they cannot not appreciate krishna's uh, beautiful manifestation in nature so akrura gives amazing analogies he says my dear lord the fire element the fire in this creation that you see is your mouth the earth is your lotus feet the sun is your eye the sky is your navel the directions are your ears space is your head the demigods are your arms the oceans and seas are your abdomen the winds and air are your strength and vitality all plants and herbs are the hairs on your body the clouds are hairs on your head the mountains are your bones the nails and nails and the days and nights are the blinking of your eyelids so like this he is giving all this beautiful comparison so when we see the nature we can connect with krishna you know just like our my dear friend chetana taran prabhu gives a very nice analogy of uh, gulab jamun he says somebody who has never seen a gulab jamun you know when he just hear smells the fragrance of the gulab jamun he may think wow and he is told that the gulab jamun there is an item called gulab jamun being prepared in the kitchen and he doesn't know what is gulab jamun but when he smells the fragrance he feels very attracted so he has got brahman realization of krishna you know somebody who has not seen uh, krishna but who sees in the nature he has got in- incomplete understanding but then he says uh, that somebody may go to the kitchen and see the gulab jamun wow it is dark um, uh, you know it is soft it is uh, and he touches it and he feels wow this is gulab jamun it looks so good so then he says it is like paramatma realization the more more understanding of god is in paramatma realization 
but the complete understanding of gulab jamun is when it comes on your tongue and you taste that warm uh, gulab jamun <laughs> it has to be it has to be served hot actually and then you taste it and you feel ah so one was tasted the gulab jamun i smelt it also and i touched it also but one who has smelt it and uh, touched it may not have tasted it similarly the bhagwan realization includes brahman and parmatma now i when i was discussing with him i told him prabhu i want to take it to the next level because sometimes we are so attached to the taste in the gulab jamun that if somebody when we see the gulab jamun we don't it is like you know our our denial of brahman and parmatma aspect of krishna he is like a person who so fanatically attached to gulab jamun that he refuses to smell the gulab jamun and refuses to touch it or see it he just closes his nose that closes his eyes and just follows it and says oh gulab jamun is tasty that is ridiculous if you really love the gulab jamun you will smell it also there is no problem in smelling it and no problem in touching it <laughs> so similarly if we love krishna we should be able to connect with krishna in our heart as parmatma he directs us and also as uh, the brahman aspect of krishna we can appreciate krishna in nature there is nothing wrong in fact you know one of the senior most leaders in iskon i am very inspired by his holiness radha govind swami maharaj whenever he sees a banyan tree he offers zandavat or whenever he sees a fig tree people tree banyan tree is a uh, in the scriptures considered as a shiva vas and the people tree is vishnu vas so these trees you know when you sit under them you can feel very much i feel very connected when i sit under an ancient tree like you know why because uh, the tree appear there one tree near our temple banyan tree which is supposed to be 400 years old so when i sit under that tree i feel wow this tree has seen you know this tree was around when vishnu chakravarti thakur came when balde vidya bhushan came and you know jeevo swami was here in this planet so then i start calculating okay when propat came this tree was here propat came to mumbai propat must have come here basically connecting to the tree ancient tree then what happens is somewhere you know we feel i don't know if you have experienced you know when you go to a very scenic place a uh, very uh, natural forest or an ocean you feel peaceful have you ever felt that in a forest in a in a ocean why you feel peaceful do you know because that ocean that forest that uh, all those trees they are very old compared to you they have been around for a long time so in 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 comparison to you and me it's they are like eternal and when we go in front of them there is something eternal within us also there is something within us also which has been for a long time <laughs> that is the soul for so the soul immediately connects to that eternal eternal principle the sat principle we don't understand it consciously but subconsciously we get very attracted to nature the sacred space like when i go to jagannath puri i become very peaceful in that temple area because you know you see that the 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 tradition that are followed in jagannath puri temple is mentioned in the chaitanya charitamrita which means it was followed 500 years ago and it was followed 1000 years ago it has been something going on for generations after generations for centuries after centuries when grahasthas come to our temple on sunday they sit in the temple hall they say prabhu i feel so peaceful because same worship of the deities has been going on six times a day offering same temple hall same kirtan same japa for 35 years so when something happens consistently for a long time and when we enter that space the undying eternal soul which has also been for a long time finds union that's how we connect with the brahman aspect and then when we are sincere in our practices and in, instead of only talking to krishna praying to krishna we also listen to the holy name when we listen to the lord that is like listening to the paramatma the lord directs us so that is a paramatma aspect so akrura is appreciating the lord uh, and is is revealing how the lord can be appreciated in material nature also and then he gives two very interesting analogies which uh, i found very nice he says he says the my dear lord you are like the ocean and you are like the udumbara fruit he says just like in the ocean there are many many aquatics many living entities similarly within you there are so many millions and trillions of living entities and udumbara fruit is big and within that fruit there are many small small insects and germs and all that So similarly, you are like that one personality within you. All of us are there. So like that, he is giving 
is helping us understand and appreciate Krishna, Krishna's uh, all embracing aspect. This is very very important. You know, many times we say we are, you know, we, we our philosophy. All of us know, right? Is con philosophies we are achintya beda beda tatva. We are qualitatively one with Krishna. We are quantitatively small. We are anu. Krishna is vibhu. But sometimes we focus so much on the quantitative difference. and we hardly understand the qualitative oneness with krishna we are we are qualitatively one with krishna we are eternal we are fully conscious we are fully blissful and when we connect to this sat chit ananda principle the i atma principle then we will be happy mind may be disturbed but our heart will be contented we will be peaceful when we are in relationship with krishna but many times our focus on the quantitative separateness from krishna we focus so much on being different from krishna that we live in the duality See, duality of this world traps us and the best way to come out of this duality is to see how we are one with the lord we are one with the lord in principle in our heart is one with the lord just like a lover will tell his beloved i am one with you but they are two different persons similarly we are one one with krishna we are not different from krishna because we love krishna krishna's interest is our interest we want to please krishna we want to remember krishna we want to experience krishna we want to serve krishna we want to share krishna with everyone so we are one with krishna so when we connect with this principle you will see as a devotee you will be always happy you may be miserable in the sense life will be tough you know we all go through our suffering right whether you are a sanyasi or a grahastha or in between all of us no one is spared you may say but prabhu ji how can renounce order people have problems well there are many closely guarded secrets even in the renounce order <laughs> just like there are secrets in your house you know in india we say ghar ghar ki kahani every house has its own story so there is suffering is everybody gets suffering you know it is like a fish cannot understand the challenges of a bird and the bird cannot understand the challenges of a fish similarly grahastha cannot understand the challenges of a renounce order and a renounce order cannot really understand the dynamics of a grahastha but material energy is equally disposed so what do we do then then we need to connect with the unifying principle that how we are one with krishna and that is the only way we are happy and then akura offers many many beautiful prayers where he glorifies the lord's matsya avatar ayagriva avatar how the lord has come you know as kurma avatar all those different narsimha dev and uh, rab you know avikil ravana as ram so like this he offers beautiful prayers and then he offers something very interesting for a grahastha to meditate upon remember we are discussing akura who is the best example of vandanam one of his prayers is excellent for grahastha to meditate upon where akura is saying my my dear lord i am always thinking i am happy because i have my house my wife my children my estate my property my friends but all this is temporary you know i am i am in dreamland because none of this is pres- uh, permanent i am a fool to be absorbed in these things so therefore my dear lord please uh, please bless me and i am like a foolish creature which leaves beautiful vegetation and water and goes to the desert searching for water mm-hmm. similarly we are leaving krishna and seeking pleasure in sense gratification so like that he offers this beautiful prayers and akura falls on the ground and he uh, and he reveals in his prayer that how simply remembering the lord's form can give us all happiness so like this he is offering beautiful prayers and as a sadhaka my take home from this chapter is prayers are very important and it improves our awareness it improves our acceptance of our situation and prayers is when we talk to the lord and when we are chanting hari krishna and when we are listening to the holy names we are actually listening to krishna see if you love someone you will talk to that person also and you will listen to that person also if you claim you love your spouse and you say i love my spouse so much that i only talk and my spouse only listens that's not possible if you love if you claim to love someone you have to also listen to that person so if we claim to love krishna we revi- we offer prayers we praise the lord you know prayers have these four things praising the lord thanking the lord begging forgiveness from the lord and making requests to the lord but this is all we are 
but prayers also means just like in a loving relationship you want to not only talk to your beloved you also listen to the beloved similarly in prayers we also listen to krishna and when we are chanting and when we listen to the holy name the holy name is not different from krishna so when we focus on listening to the holy name we are actually listening to krishna when we focus on the syllables hare krishna and ram krishna will reveal to us krishna will tell in our heart what will he say is he going to whisper sweet nothings in our ear oh prabhu oh mata ji oh whoever you are you know i love you no krishna is going to say you fool you rascal <laughs> you know krishna is going to say both <laughs> like i have one i have one grass stuff friend i mean he was a boy coming to my class for many years and then he fell in love with a woman and they were not able to get married and the long story and finally the parents agreed and all that happened after five or six years of struggle they eventually got married both are devotees initiated devotees and uh, they got married but one day i overheard on the phone i shouldn't have heard actually uh, he he was, he was coming in a car to drop one thing in the temple and he disconnected i also dis- disconnected but i had kept it on the speaker phone and i kept the phone next to me and i forgot to disconnect and he also forgot to disconnect and he was driving and he kept the phone next to him and he was driving and then suddenly i heard his wife's voice boom you know now you are going to go to the ashram and sit with prabhu ji and i am going to be in the car ah, 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 ah. she was blasting him left right and center and i was on the computer and i heard her voice i said wow this is the same person and she she was always very gracious when she would come in front of me and all of, they would always be hare krishna but i never knew she had this aspect of personality and i was like wow my friend's wife is like this and then the i knew i'm doing something wrong i should disconnect i shouldn't be here over hearing a conversation but the temptation got the better of me so i i started hearing their conversation and she was chastising him left right center and he kept hmm you know the only thing i could hear him say is hmm 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 so then after a few minutes my conscience told me you are doing wrong you shouldn't be poking your nose in you know you shouldn't be use dropping like this so i disconnected and then they came to the then he came to the room it kept that sound system the speaker and then he was rushing i said hey, prabhu sit relax let us talk for some time he said no no prabhu i have to go the maid is going to come i said hey, kuch nahi hoga sit sit relax relax he was so restless and then i told him prabhu you know with a twinkle in my eye i told him prabhu i overheard what your wife was telling you in the car and his jaw dropped he said prabhu you heard everything i said yeah i mean for a, for 5 minutes i heard and then i told him my god she chastises you really bad and then we just did like this <laughs> and then he said he sulk and he said prabhu what you heard wasn't even a trailer <laughs> i then then i laughed then of course we met later see they have a very sweet relationship okay they they see they love each other very much and he also admitted it and there's an interesting thing he told me he said prabhu i am convinced my wife loves me and i also love her and we have gone through a lot of our struggles and we are happy with each other but just because she loves me doesn't mean that she only always speaking sweet things she also gives me the sauce <laughs> so love as you know love is not something where you only where you only get you know only hear sweet things similarly when we chant hare krishna attentively and we listen to krishna's holy name we don't only hear krishna saying prabhu you are so you don't you don't, you don't get when he say krishna consciousness is sweet it's not sweet like sweet rice it is more like that crack jack biscuit you know we get in india which is little khatta little meetha it is you know it is not exactly sweet it is basically it is irresistible so our relationship with krishna is irresistible it is not always it, devotees don't only hear our dirty things our anarthas krishna reveals to us one of the best gifts krishna gives a devotee who sincerely prays to krishna is awareness awareness of who we are and that is actually mercy to be aware you know for somebody in the renounced order like let's say somebody has you know when he was a young boy he was preached to very enthusiastically and he was very bold and he became a brahmachari and after 25 years he realized this well well what happened 25 years ago just like many girls also realize well how did i get married to her you know what happened <laughs> how did you take up this job you know they go through this uh, bewilderment sometimes you know sort of people also go through that and that time when they had this awareness this is a gift of krishna 
Krishna is telling them, Prabhu, you are a brahmachari or you are a sannyasi by accident. Oh, okay, okay. So that, that is why Krishna is telling you that you are not some, you are not a pure devotee, okay? Don't, don't believe what the people tell you. So when Krishna is like that spouse who gives you a sauce and that humility, and then we have a choice of accept awareness is Krishna's gift. But accepting that is our gift to Krishna. Can I accept what Krishna is revealing to me? So, so therefore, it is very important to have both aspects to our prayers. One is talking to the Lord and also listening to the Lord. Shravanam and Kirtanam, both are needed. And prayers, when we offer prayers, that is when our spiritual life becomes really topless. In that humility, in that connection with Krishna, accepting our flaws, accepting our limitations, accepting the mistakes we have made in the past, all this is part of our relationship with Krishna becoming beautiful. Otherwise, you know, otherwise our Krishna consciousness will be very external, very material, very ritualistic. It is prayers which, which is the bridge from external aspect of Krishna consciousness to the internal aspect. From the material to the spiritual, that journey happens when we, uh, when we are offering heartfelt prayers to Krishna. And the essence of our sadhana bhakti which Rupa Goswami has given is, always remember Krishna, never forget Krishna. And remembering prayers of Akrura will help us in our own prayers. Uh, and it will help us um, connect with Krishna. Hmm? So before I go ahead, I want to pause here and take any questions or comments and then we can continue. Is there any questions or comments so far? <clears throat> yes. Raise your hand if you want to... Uh, ask a question to Prabhuji or provide a comment. <coughs> yes, Mr. Gopal. Uh, Hare Krishna Prabhuji, can you hear me? Sorry, my line is not very stable. I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. I can hear. So, Prabhuji, Hare Krishna Prabhuji, Dharma Pranam, thank you so much. Um, Prabhuji, uh, my question is, uh, you were giving the example of a husband and a wife and how sometimes they give the source, you know. So, like, can husband and wives offend each other like offense? Like what I mean is, see, a husband or wife might say something to each other that is quite harsh. But if that that husband or wife said the same thing to another Vaishnava or Vaishnavi, that other Vaishnava or Vaishnavi may get offended, you know, like it. So, on that sense, we say, oh, that's an offense, you know. But when a husband and a wife speak the same thing to each other, can they also offend each other in that way, is what I'm trying to say. Hmm. It's an interesting question. See, we live in an ashram where there are 100, 100 people. And uh, our lives are exactly like the grass ashram that except the, except the conjugal element, which everything is same. We also have same issues, same problems. Because uh, you may, your family may be four people, five people, you know, husband, wife, children, like that. But in our family, there are hundred people, <laughs> and and all from different cultures. You know, somebody is a North Indian, somebody is South Indian, somebody is from West, somebody from Africa. It's crazy. So the principles I've learned is yes. Uh, sometimes we are very nice with the people whom we are preaching to, but in the ashram we may be harsh with our our own members. It's possible. So familiarity breeds contempt. Mm, that's very much possible. Therefore, a culture of prayer and culture of uh, Krishna consciousness. See, basically what happens when we're attentive in our spiritual practices is we become more conscientious than otherwise. Conscientious means we become careful to a fault. And mm, we realize sometimes that harsh speech you know, is unavoidable because uh, life is composed of all emotions. See, one of the disadvantages of a renounced order ashram is where everybody is equipoised or everybody tries to be blissful and peaceful and happy. But in Grasta ashram, you can't do that drama. Because in Grasta <laughs> because in Grasta ashram, it is, it is made by Krishna, right? So, what happens is, there you go, you experience all emotions. One day you are happy, one day you are sad, one day you are angry, one day you are irritated. And life is composed of Life is complete because of consisting of all the emotions, right? So sometimes because life is complete with all emotions, sometimes you get this little, this flavor also. <laughs> but your ability to 
come back and make up that is the key so many grasthas you know most grasthas have their uh, fights and all that but within 24 hours if you can resolve it then i think that is uh, healthy but to avoid it to avoid conflicts is uh, foolish because you know in the name of conflict conflict resolution is good but conflict avoidance is deadly that means then there is no relationship uh, then you are uh, you are not you are not actually when there are good deep relationships there will be differences of opinion and there will be conflict but yeah i agree a harsh speech violence physical violence abuse that they are very very serious issues that to be immediately uh, addressed either through third party or sometimes you may need legal help i'm talking about a, a normal healthy family life where there are little bit of skirmishes where there are little issues those need to be addressed and resolved and as it happens in the ashram also it happens sometimes you know some people misunderstand each other this is part of life but uh, unfortunately for us here there is a disadvantage because here what happens in our ashram what happens is if somebody is upset with you then you are also upset with them then you can easily ignore him because there are 99 other people <laughs> and we may have hurt someone and then after a few months he comes around we come around you know we don't need to apologize and we don't need to actually make up but in in grasta life you have to be with the same person you can't afford to <laughs> you can't afford to uh, bulldoze you know you can't just afford to be harsh and insensitive so my understanding is uh, grasta ashram makes a devotee more mature because he becomes more sensitive but there is a danger there also you may become so sensitive and so is involved in their family issue that you forget krishna i mean I mean, because there is no end to your problems, you know. There is no end to person misunderstanding, clarifying, counter clarifying. Oh, you go crazy. So that thin line. Uh, I, I guess both ashrams have their own advantages and disadvantages. Sometimes, in the name of being Krishna conscious, we be, we get so cut off from reality, you know, and we we just don't understand that life is composed of all, all emotions. I've seen sometimes. I, I saw one brahmachari who was extremely attached to his parents, and uh, when when his father passed away. He was like, he was pretending as if he's not affected. And I remember going and telling him, why don't you have a good cry? Why don't you cry about it? He said, no, no, Prabhu, I'm okay. Krishna is very merciful. I said, you're living in denial. You are deeply saddened. You are grief stricken. You need to, you need to release it. He said, no, Prabhu, Krishna is very kind. And my father was never a devotee. Blah, 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 blah. And then, you know, 15 years later, it came back to haunt him. Because denial is the worst kind of lie because that is a lie we speak to ourselves. So many times, uh, you know, sort of people may live in denial, and grass ashram uh, devotees may get trapped by their uh, limited frog in the well problem so much that they can't see the bigger picture. They can't see the Krishna space. You know, their their head, their feet, grass feet is in the ground so much that they can't see the beautiful sky above, and the brahmacharis are flying in the sky. They, their feet is not on the ground. <laughs> Uh, so it's a crazy thing, you know. Therefore, I guess we need to we need to appreciate and empathize with each other. And uh, one of the best advantages you guys have is because for you, life give life comes in complete package. You know, you can you can easily tell you can easily tell another grasa that I'm not happy uh, today, or in the last few days I'm not happy, and you will not be called abnormal or you will not be judged for it. But a non order person cannot say I'm not happy. Like I remember once somebody came and asked me, Prabhu, can you do this program for our uh, counseling group? I said, I'll let you know next week. He said, no, no, Prabhu, you give me the date. You can give me a date two months later also, but can you give me the date now so that, you know, we can book you? I said, not today, Prabhu. Today I'm very sad. I'm not in a good space. So he said, what? Prabhu, you, you are sad? I mean, how can you be unhappy? I said, I, I'm unhappy because I'm a human being, but I'm okay. I'm unhappy, but I'm okay. <laughs> See, our problem is modern propaganda is if you are if you are not happy, that means something there is something wrong with you. Krishna consciousness is not like that, you know. I mean, I, I can see Mataji is in this class. I'm sure some of you are mothers, you know. So if you have a child, do you love your child? Every mother will say yes. Now, if I ask you an honest question, does your child only give you happiness? <laughs> is, the, is happiness the only emotion you experience with regards to your child or your husband whom you love? 
No, what are the different emotions? You know, mothers will say, oh, I got angry with my child, frustrated. <laughs> so so like, what I'm trying to say is, love, we love Krishna, but that, that doesn't mean, you know, I'm always happy. So when you accept this, then your relationship in the grass ashram becomes peaceful. Okay. You know, we can't necessarily always be happy, happy the way the, the way the propaganda is done by the material world. And then understanding that, giving each other the space, and then even if there are a little bit of, you know, we, 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 you know, we snap, we just, we lose, we lose it many times. It happens. But to the extent we can come back and apologize sincerely and move forward. <laughs> but personalities are different. And sometimes you have to tolerate, right? You have to tolerate also. I guess, Gras Ashram, I saw my father. My father was a very uh, no-nonsense person. He was a very, uh, you know, he had a, with a very uh, dashing personality, he was in a big government job. And my mother, you know, everybody has their own idiosyncrasies. Idiosyncrasies, you know, like unique characteristics which can irritate another person. So my mother's idiosyncrasy was, she's, she's not organized. She can't organize things properly. So my father would help her, but then my father would get irritated because my mother would keep things here and there. So, and he would shout at home. And I remember as a kid seeing my father's anger at things not being organized. Now, when, during the later years, like when I was 45 or something, when I went home, my father is like, you know, 70 plus and he's slowly drying the clothes and he's doing things. And I saw my mother is still the same, you know, <laughs> she is, you know, and my father is cooled down. So I asked my father that, dad, uh, mother has left all those things scattered here and you quietly are organizing it. You're not, you're not what you wear, you know, what I'd seen as a teenager. <laughs> my father laughed and he said, son, what you can't cure, you have to endure. <laughs> <laughs> so I love I love that statement. What you can't cure, you have to endure. So I guess uh, that's what happens in the grasta ashram. And for brahmachari, it is an in internal aspect in the inner world. What we can't cure, we have to endure. Like you know, we have to come to terms with who we are, with our anarthas, and um, we realize that there is a problem that we cannot solve. You know, we spend a lot of years in our lives trying to solve problems. And after some time, we realize that some problems cannot be solved. And then they're not a problem to be solved, but rather they are the truth to be accepted. <coughs> so that realization comes. Yes, Bharadwaj Rishi Prabhu. Is that okay, Nitya Gopal Krishna Prabhu? Yes, thank you, Prabhuji. Thank you so thank much. You. Hare Krishna. Yes, Bharadwaj Rishi Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Dhanavad Pranam Prabhuji. Prabhu, that, that was very insightful. Prabhuji, just an extension to what you said, like, you know, <clears throat> uh, sometimes um, people ask, uh, you know, now that you have been in the Krishna conscious for some time, so are you, are you happy? So you must be happy all the time. So like, uh, what do, what do we tell them, uh, Prabhuji? You have to be honest. I tell people honestly, when people ask me, you must be blissful, you must be ecstatic. I tell them, I find shelter in Krishna consciousness. I find shelter and that's been very authentic. Shelter means, you know, a sense of feeling just like in the outside world, when you, when you're going outside, you know, there may be rain, there may be storms, there may be problems. And when you come home, you feel a shelter. You feel like, ah, oh. you know what I'm saying? Like I was stuck in a traffic jam for six hours a few months ago. And then when I finally came to my room here, you know, and it was hot, the AC was not working in the car and the trains were jammed and Mumbai traffic, pom, pom, all that problem. When I came to the room, I was like so relieved. I found a sense of shelter, you know, for my room, my comfort. This is the external world. Similarly, in our inner world, a lot of traffic jams, relationship conflicts, misunderstandings, problems, blah, 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 blah. and then suddenly you go to your room, your home state, your space like Bhagavatam or, you know, for some it is deity worship. For me, it is journaling. So there, that is my home state. Home. That is where you find shelter. So when people ask me, uh, are you blissful in Krishna consciousness? I say, I find shelter in Krishna consciousness. And shelter is where I feel I'm at home. You know, I experience a sense of peace. But as long as we live in this material world, uh, uh, you know, people are different. When people ask you, are you blissful? I don't know what they mean. Sometimes, you know, many times in this world, I've seen people misunderstand pleasure to be happiness. Pleasure is dependent on the external sense objects, but happiness is not dependent on sense objects. 
pleasure is when an object outside like when you eat something tasty or when you smell something so senses connect to the sense object that gives pleasure but happiness is deeper <clears throat> it is a space of the heart so i honestly if i have to say last 24 years my life has gone through a lot of roller coaster and i don't need to share it with you because i guess all of us have our own problems but i am very grateful that i have krishna consciousness and krishna has stamped this world as dukkhale mashashvatam and if we are telling people no i am a hari krishna devotee then all my problems are gone then how are we different from those baba ji who say that come to our um, uh, camp we will give you this tavis you wear this locket and all those you know they, the tantrics how are we different from the tantrics and the demigod worshippers who promise that you know you do this and then all problems are gone so we are not we, we are honest about it dukkhale mashashvatam and we have our baggage of karma we have our conditionings and uh, krishna consciousness you know the lot of tears uh, will come uh, and lot of uh, and then when you go to krishna then that's when all the problems will be gone <laughs> you know so this world is not a this world is happy because we are happy because few things one is we have shelter and second we have association see association helps i don't know right now why why many times you know we have these videos on in classes or offline why we have why i insist you know devotees coming together is because um <laughs> when the videos are on subconsciously what happens you know each one of you is going through suffering so when you're attending the class subconsciously you know oh oh he is there okay he is there she is there oh wo bhi pit rahe they are also suffering and they are also here we are all together okay <laughs> misery loves company you know subconsciously it happens in the brahmacharya class in the brahmacharya class you know when sometimes when i'm giving class everybody is sitting quietly and sometimes i make it interactive so one one devotee said probably don't make it interactive we just keep speaking we will listen sometimes you may fall asleep but don't make us think <laughs> you know we are happy you know we are all suffering and we have come together and when when we see oh he is there he she is there okay everybody is there hari krishna <laughs> material world is like that so are you happy yes i am happy because i have you for association i am happy because prabhupada has given me a chance to serve all of you devotees and because of amrish maharaj prabhu i met so many of you today you know i saw bharadwaj ji prabhu asked a question i spoke to i think before this uh, who, who asked a question before this nitya gopal uh, uh, so like that so it is nice so we meet devotees then we connect with them and then later on we meet so association is the only happiness in krishna consciousness i know of and the shelter the a uh, general writing dt worship shaligram worship i do in temple uh, you know dt worship bhagavatam studying this is the only otherwise there is no happiness and if somebody is claiming to be always happy they must be either pure devotees or they must be lying it's propaganda you know it's propaganda is dangerous because uh, this world is not a this world is this world is not a happy place actually bhakti vidhan sadhu thakur said this world is not a fit place for a gentleman right i mean you are grasthas you know <laughs> you know better our problems are all theoretical your problems are <laughs> you are dealing you are actually fighting a battle every day is a battle so i can understand uh, so you don't have to tell people that you know if they ask you are you really happy you can tell them yes i am happy because i have got good association and there is also suffering but the suffering becomes tolerable and it's it's tolerable tolerable because we have good association and we are not here for happiness we are here for a purpose you know we have a purpose and when we are happiness focused prahlad mara says in the bhagavatam if you want to be happy if you want to be miserable then always keep asking are you happy <laughs> hmm? so, be- so so better than happiness we should seek um, a purpose okay now we are discussing akrura great example look at akrura situation akrura background of this past time now we all know the prayers we discussed today but you know the background akrura is coming to vrindavan which is just half an hour drive from mathura he takes a whole day to come to mathura uh, vrindavan because he is remembering krishna meditating on krishna and one of the prayers he has in the, the first part of his prayers when he is coming to vrindavan one of the concerns he has is fear oh kamsa will misunderstand me every uh, Uh, kamsa will be kamsa will get angry with me because i am going to vrindavan uh, i love krishna so he is afraid that if kamsa comes to know that i actually love krishna he may punish me or krishna may misunderstand that krishna may misunderstand that oh i am an agent of kamsa 
So Krishna will then then he thinks no, but Krishna knows my heart. See, there is anxiety, Akrura had anxiety. And what a service Akrura did. Akrura gave pain to the gopis of Vrindavan. And he loves Krishna. And his prayers are the best prayers. You think he's happy about it? <laughs> to be called by gopis, uh, such strong words. So the point I'm saying is, that's, that's, that's life for you. Srila Prabhupada, he had eight children, out of which three of them died during childbirth. And of the five, four of them rejected Prabhupada. Only the youngest son, Vrindavan Chandra, appreciated what Prabhupada did. The oldest daughter was married. She was in Kolkata. The second son, uh, Mathura Mohan, uh, even mad, he fell in love with the girl and then finally something happened. And then Prabhupada... Um, got a professional psychologist and treated him in the most aristocratic, most expensive hospital in Kolkata. In the, they had a special British ward there and there Prabhupada spent a lot of money treating his son for his psychological illness. It seemed to work for some time and then finally it didn't work and his son ran away from home. He was living in the gut, uh, uh, he was eating from the garbage can of Kolkata, living like a beggar who had no house and shelter. And then the younger uh, son, after him was, uh, after Matra Mohan was, uh, one more, I forget, he rejected his father, saying that you left home when, and put all the burden on me. And then his sister, younger sister, she refused to get married. She was so traumatized. So Prabhupada, if you see in his grass life, and then he had six times business losses. So what are we trying to say? You know, material happiness, there is no guarantee. And when you have a culture of prayers, I'll be very honest, culture of prayers doesn't mean your material problems will be solved, but culture of prayers means you will come closer to Krishna. And when you come closer to Krishna, some bigger problem is solved. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much for your hands, And then we can, we'll have to stop after this Prabhu. So I see Parjanya Prabhu and Kirti Vanta Prabhu. And then, is that okay, Amarish Maharaj Prabhu? After these two questions, we'll stop. Yeah, if you have uh, little more time, I can also ask one question, Prabhuji, in the end. But let us see, okay. depending on your time, Prabhuji. Parjana Prabhu, you can, you can go ahead. <clears throat> Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Thank you very much for a very nice class. And thank you for being honest and sharing a lot of other stories of real life, actually. Because sometimes in a Bhagavatam class, we hear a lot of stories of which we can't relate much because they are pure devotees and they be the links. Sometimes we see very exalted and we may not be at that level. So it's really hard to, uh, for us to understand. So how based on the conversation that is happening so far, how can we be authentic, Prabhuji? Because sometimes we see things black and white and we may not find any shades in between. And uh, it may be really hard for us to share our heart as well to other devotees. So how do we, how can we be authentic? Because I see you are very authentic, Prabhuji. You are sharing a lot of your examples and other people's examples. So how can we be like that, Prabhuji? <clears throat> Authenticity begins with being authentic with oneself. Or if you are a grasta, with, some, with your spouse or somebody who you are close to. Like for us, for renounced order people, generally their journal is their companion or you know their prayers, their sadhana, they connect with Krishna. So you need to be authentic with yourself. You need to accept who you are. With all your flaws, with all your limitations. See, we want to improve. We have an aspiration. But the first step is to accept yourself, you know. Most people are suffering from uh, self-hatred. Uh, they, they don't like, inherently they don't like themselves. So because of that, when they come to Krishna consciousness, they hear how uh, Mahaprabhu used to condemn himself, how Acharyas condemn themselves. Then uh, they already didn't like themselves. So then they start hating themselves more. And then uh, that leads to a very abnormal uh, psychological condition in the lives of devotees. So acceptance means, you know, you don't have to tell the world, you don't have to tell the world, it's just accepting, you know, your own, uh, like, for example, there is one, uh, one uh, Prabhuji, he told me about his wife, I mean, uh, he was telling me how she went through abuse since the age of five, from her close family and all that, and then, they, and when she came to Krishna consciousness, she thought this will solve all the problems, but that the, it kept haunting her. 
and then finally they took professional help they got the thing you know they they worked on it and now she practices self love she teaches self love also so what i'm trying to say is many times authentic means being authentic first to our own selves accepting what has happened to us or what we are or who we are with our limitations once we are that once we are connected to ourselves then it will come out and the best way to be authentic is through either journaling through attend at basically attend attentive attention in our practices spiritual practice because we are attentive to krishna and krishna revi is like another example of that uh, devotee whose wife gave him the sauce similarly krishna will see krishna is very kind krishna will not simply chastise you when you are attentive krishna will also love you krishna consciousness burijan prabhu has written this amazing book i got the realization when i read that book called japa by his grace burijan prabhu you know there he writes a very beautiful statement that attentive chanting the reward is not hum- uh, the reward is not love of krishna he says the, at- the reward of attentive chanting is humility <laughs> you know first humility comes and then love of krishna comes you know humility to accept who we are so therefore uh, authenticity will come if we are attentive in our practices and we are attentive to krishna's voice in our heart krishna revealing to us our own limitations krishna will ground us you know we can't we can't we can lie lie to the whole world but we can't cheat krishna because when we are chanting we are with krishna and krishna because he is our true well wisher he will show the mirror prabhu hare krishna you think you are a vaishnava just see this hari bol and then we don't want to see it the, if you can see it yes krishna this is me this is the tattenu kampam verse brahma ji when he was humble he accepted it tattenu kampam that's when he chanted that famous verse from the 10th canto of the 14th chapter lord shiva was, was embarrassed in front of his disciples when mohini murti appeared but lord shiva didn't get into depression he was glorifying the lord with so much beautiful prayers so if we can accept who we are at least to ourselves and to krishna krishna this is who i am thank you for showing me the mirror bolta na that shiva drank hala hal there is a saying in hindi okay uh i don't know if you follow all of you follow hindi i'll translate it in english later one hindi poet has said that uh, zeher zeher marne ke liye thoda sa par zinda rehne ke liye bahut peena padta hai <laughs> uh, poison poison you have to take poison very little to die but to remain alive you have to take a lot <laughs> so that inability to accept ourselves for who we are with all our flaws and limitations um, that is where uh, we are suffering from so authenticity means first accepting yes you know this is my limitation this is who i am like i remember one conversation i was hearing shila prabhupada is saying so i have this bengali body you know prabhupada prabhupada is able to say that i have this bengali body <laughs> once one sanyasi one sanyasi told shila prabhupad that prabhupad uh, you know i am very disturbed uh, i am feeling uh, very guilty uh, because you know he had taken sanyas a few months before he had left his wife and all that and he said prabhupad my i have taken sanyas i am supposed to be very pure but last night my wife came in my dream and i am feeling extremely guilty <laughs> and you know she i am not supposed to be getting this kind of dreams i am sanyasi i am supposed to be pure uh, so then prabhupada's amazing answer prabhupada just smiled he said my wife also came in my dream last night don't take it too seriously come on hare krishna <laughs> prabhupada just dismissed it so the point is you know we we have a, we have a lot of burden we have created a lot of burden on our head krishna consciousness is you know we, have, we want to offer our heart to krishna i remember once asking janani vas prabhu Janivas Prabhu, Prabhu, uh, you know we are not pure. When will we become pure? He said, "Don't stop worrying about becoming pure. Whoever you are, in whatever condition you are, you can offer your heart to Krishna. It is Krishna. Krishna will take care." So I am not saying we should not aspire to be pure. I am not saying we should not try to overcome our anarthas. But I am saying coming to terms with who we are. See, there is a difference between being shameless and on authenticity. Sometimes you know. Prabhu, I am being very honest. I am very authentic. You know, I can't chant Hare Krishna. I will just chant one round only. Last thirty years, I am chanting only one round. So I am very authentic. You know, I am very honest. That is shameless. 
there is a difference between being honest and being shameless <laughs> okay let me define what is authenticity what is honesty definition of honesty is honest means to know who you are or where you are but not remain where you are i'll repeat honesty means to know where you are but not remain where you are shameless means to know where you are and remain there only <laughs> so we are honest what is because i know like you know in my in my this is curtain i put a i put a notice in my notice board i put a paper there that gives me a lot of strength when i see that you know uh okay now I'll, i'll share it generally i don't share it but now because it has come up and that gives me strength it's a, you know i have written a statement saying that i am see we, we are all see we, we all we are all products of krishna conscious preaching right so when we were young boys uh, you know just like many grahasthas say you know i, I know one grahastha who tells me see i am very loyal to my wife and i'll take care of her and i'll serve her and i'll serve my children and i'm very loyal to my family and uh, you know uh, uh, but i made a mistake getting married i should have become a renounce order when i was a young boy many grahasthas have this realization and they are responsible people they are responsible people uh, and they love their family they'll take care of the family but somewhere they feel that you know like proper also felt this when he met bhaktisanta thakur for the first time and when he came out he told his friend that you know i should have uh, I, i wish i had not got married the lilamru says you know i wish i could have the joint bhaktas on stack full time so many girls have this realization it is great now in the renounced order in the earlier times the preaching was you know renounced order is the only place where you can be krishna conscious so many young boys became brahmacharis not because you know they they had uh, realizations of krishna but because they thought this is the way to practice bhakti but after some years we realize well by wearing the saffron cloth you don't the cloth doesn't guarantee purity that something else you have to work hard so in that context you know i have written a, 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 a line a vision statement you know i am a grahastha by nature a brahmachari by choice i i i i am a grahastha by nature brahmachari by choice i am i make mistakes but i am not a criminal i am not pure but i am sincere so this statement this when i see this i feel very connected to myself i feel i'm i'm in a very authentic space i may not be pure devotee but i know i'm sincere you know i make sometimes mistakes you know like in dealings in relationships in services but i'm not a criminal i don't have to go crazy about it. and yeah i i think i am doing i'm leading a honest life at the same time to say that you know because the the way sometimes the congregation treats you know order in iskon because of the training they have got from their uh, their culture and their values they treat us like pure devotees so to burst that bubble we tell them that we are like you guys only just that we are we are serving in the brahmacharya ashram so that keeps the mind peaceful it otherwise you go crazy you know you start believing what people worship you so in your own way you can you can tweak this and make your own vision statement which helps you to be more authentic thank you very much prabhu ji that was very helpful actually i'll try to practice on this hari krishna thank you parjanya prabhu is kritika prabhu hari krishna prabhu ji prabhu ji some very nice uh, question and answers um and prabhu ji my question is along along the similar theme of of the previous few questions um you mentioned also burden on our heads but sometimes i feel um you know that the burden is also given by our family and friends when we in our exam what i mean by that is that when we come into krishna consciousness um and once your friends and family realize that you've come to krishna consciousness there's an expectation that suddenly you're a priya devotee overnight and there's an expectation of a certain behavior that the, that you are now expected to have um and then when your anatha has come out in a situation you know you get squeezed and juice comes out uh suddenly they say oh well, but you're meant to be a devotee you know so i'm sure when you you know may have experienced things like that when you've come to the ashrams and things so what um how do we manage those things probably what's the mindset we need to have and is there is there a solution to to those sorts of the expectations no there are no solutions to the extent i think to the extent we are more uh, honest in our presentation of krishna consciousness 
I think to that extent uh, will will be peaceful. Otherwise, you can't change people's like you know you are at this level. Uh, people treat you as if you are here, and then you slip a little, then they take you down. <laughs> people don't treat you for who you are. They treat you for who they imagine you would be, and then they also judge you. So we are living in a world of constant judgment. So the best thing to do is we actually don't judge others, and we accept. Can you accept others for who they are? The problem is we are always judging others, and then when we are judged, we don't like it. <laughs> you know, see, Prabhupada was in the space of pure love of Krishna and pure compassion. So when he called somebody a rascal. it was very sweet actually <laughs> dr patel you know relishes saying that oh prabhupada is to call me rascal but we can't we can't uh, we can't say that because when we ent- when we say that we are we are entering the space of judgment and we are entering the space of uh, not accepting a person prabhupada accepted people for who they are and gave them krishna so our inability to accept ourselves accept others constantly judging ourselves constantly judging others and then when we are judged we can't take it so at least we could do two things stop judging others and start accepting ourselves for who we are then we will not be affected by the world's uh, harsh judgments about us is that okay yes, prabhu yeah. prabhu i am really sorry uh, amrish maharaj prabhu i need to rush for a meeting which was supposed to be at 12 o'clock uh, it is 12 10 here i mean i am 10 minutes late they are asking me to come immediately that's I'm fine really- but we will connect again and i'm very grateful to all of you for giving me an opportunity to serve you thank you very much prabhuji that was a very wonderful lecture and very wonderful question and answers and uh, we are hoping that we'll be able to hear from you again in this shower of that is going on i'll connect with you to find another suitable time uh, that we can connect prabhuji so let's show our gratitude to prabhuji by loudly chanting once again hari krishna mahamantra for prabhuji Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Please, Mr. Vihari Prabhu Ji ki jai. Jai. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna.